So reports are coming out that the Bulls, rather than tearing it all down, blowing up the roster, they're looking for players that can help them win now. This according to Mike Scotto of the Hoops Hype. Now, I don't put Mike Scotto on the same lines as Woj and Shamsharania when it comes to overall credibility and legitimacy of their reporting, but Mike is still a very respectable reporter and well-connected NBA insider in the business. And so while there is some skepticism on whether this is just more smoke, you'd have to think there is a lot of truth to it. And if that is in fact the case, it's a bit concerning if you're a Bulls fan to hear this is going to be the front office's approach when it comes to the trade deadline. But at the same time, it's also not surprising. Like, are we really surprised that this front office, who has made it abundantly clear that they were looking to win now, how they weren't interested in a rebuild, how they believed in the guys that they had, not really taking much accountability for the team they constructed, they did all of that on media day, did you really expect any other scenario? This new regime came in, didn't even wait a full season on the job before taking swift action to start being competitive now when they traded for Vucevic. So we all know these guys aren't going to take defeat lightly. We know they're not going to give up on this so quickly, even though I think most people would agree that they should. But the front office has already made it clear. They're not interested in doing that, and this all but confirms it. Now, I will say, though, by the Bulls looking for win now players could mean a lot of different things, and they are not all necessarily bad. Like, I feel most Bulls fans, their reaction, including myself, when we saw this report was, you've got to be kidding me. How is it that you're still trying to salvage this? Give it up already. This team is not going to work. Start over. But at the same time, going after win now players could mean, hey, we're not really interested in acquiring a bunch of draft picks for trading away our best players, which to an extent, I kind of get because they haven't been the best at drafting since they took over the job. But instead of stacking up draft capital, their focus is going to be more on already established players who have proven their worth and players that are a bit younger with some upside. Like the common example is the rumor about the Bulls getting D'Angelo Russell and Marie Hachimura and the Lakers 2029 first round pick for Zach Levine. Well, I don't like that trade per se, and I don't think D'Lo or Rui really elevates the Bulls at all. In theory, you could call those win now type pieces, mainly because D'Angelo Russell already already established starter in the NBA, has a lot of flaws and I'm not a fan of his game, but a strong offensive player, can shoot, and veteran experience. Hachimura is still young, younger than Zach anyway, and has some upside to give you more depth at the four. I'm not saying I necessarily agree that this would be considered win now type players, but simply saying this maybe is how the front office is viewing it because in theory, you could still be competitive, especially considering how well the Bulls have played as of late without Zach Levine. The other thing is it's very possible the Bulls try and go after bigger, younger name type players who actually would help them win now. I still think it's a stretch, but we've said it before, Zion Williamson. Would the Bulls try and make a push to land him if the Pelicans are perceiving Zion to be unhappy and not fully engaged in buying into their system? I mean, it's going to cost the Bulls more than just a straight Zach for Zion trade, and I don't really like the fit of Zach in New Orleans, so I'm not sure the Pelicans would actually entertain that, but more so using this as an example of a win-now type player the Bulls could pursue in a trade. And then, of course, my worst nightmare, the Bulls trading Zach for Julius Randle, which if that happens, I may just quit on this fan base. I highly, highly doubt it would happen. But again, really just using it as an example of another quote unquote star level player who has been a bit disgruntled. Fans are frustrated with his performance. He might be due for a change of scenery. Maybe that's another way the Bulls front office is viewing this as an opportunity to still bring in win now talent without having to go into a full blown rebuild, even though bringing in Randall and putting him alongside DeMar, another player who is ISO heavy and a ball stopper and doesn't help space the floor would be an absolute disaster. And then of course, the other scenario is you go after some of these younger up and coming players as opposed to future draft picks who are actually good enough to start competing now and still have future upside. Like, would the Bulls be able to make a push for Jaime Hawkins, Jaden Ivey from the Pistons, OG Ananobi from the Raptors if they're still looking to move him, although he's not really that young anymore, but a very serviceable two-way player that could elevate this team. Like, there are ways the Bulls could approach this in a way where they feel they could still bring in competitive pieces right now. Players that are already established rather than hoping some future draft picks pan out. And to be honest, I also get that approach. Like, as much as we may want to see this thing blown up, get as much draft picks as possible, build through the draft, a lot of times that doesn't work out. And for the Bulls, aside from the mid-2000s run and getting lucky and landing Derrick Rose, it really hasn't worked out for them. Because as I've said before, the draft can be a bit of a crapshoot and never really knowing how a prospect is going to translate their game at the NBA level. And so, is there a world where it would make sense for the Bulls to go after some quality players, maybe not to the same level as Zach Levine is, but quality, high-character players who could fit nicely with the team and buy into the system that have a good track record of being competitors and winning at the highest level. 
to at least keep this team competitive and for the franchise to still be able to attract free agents. Because let's be real, if and when the Bulls do trigger a rebuild, you're not going to be able to get quality free agents once that happens. The top free agents aren't going to want to come to a rebuilding situation, even if you offer them a big bag. The counter to all this, though, by the Bulls trying to pursue win now players, whether it be some of the ones I mentioned or others, does this just keep the Bulls mid and in a perpetual state of mediocrity? Because as we all know, that's the worst place to be in basketball. Not good enough to truly compete, but not bad enough to really secure some of the top prospects entering the league in a chance at franchise level players. And my concern is that is most likely going to be the scenario if the Bulls push for this route. Like, yes, D'Angelo Russell, Rui Hachimura will enable the Bulls to still be decent. Maybe they make the play in, but those guys aren't moving the needle for them. Even with a lot of the other options that I mentioned, it's the same scenario. Bulls will still be mid. And what does that really do? Sure, for fans, it's better than watching a tanking team in the immediate term, but does it really solve for the Bulls' woes in the long term? No, it doesn't. Now, I do like the idea of going after some of these younger pieces like Jaime Hawkins, Javon Ivey. I'm sure there are other names I'm forgetting that could be moved if they don't fit the timeline of their current team, but that enables the Bulls to still be somewhat competitive, but bad enough that they get a decent lottery pick. But there are all these young studs that you can continue to work with and build around to go alongside Patrick Williams and Kobe White. The other wrinkle to add to all of this, it was reported yesterday the Bulls are not interested in trading Alex Caruso and have reportedly shut down calls from a host of teams that are interested in him. And I may have to make a separate video on this topic because there is a lot I want to say regarding this. But in short, and I tweeted this when the report came out from Sham Sharania, I know I'm in the minority on this one, but I'm actually fine with the Bulls holding on to Alex Crusoe. Unless you're getting an insane haul for him, I'm talking two first round picks at a minimum, maybe even a young player in that, then yes, you trade him. But as good as AC is, I really don't see a title contending team giving up that much to get him. And if you're not going to get that kind of return, in my opinion, it's not worth trading him. He's more valuable than that. And while most will say it doesn't make sense to hold on to Caruso when his value is at its peak, he's not going to fit the Bulls timeline anyway, his contract is going to be expiring soon, his value is only going to go down from here. Well, to that I reply, then so be it. If you can't get a substantial haul for him, keep him. Like, I don't think people understand the importance that culture plays into building a franchise and whether the Bulls trade all three of their big three and get a bunch of young guys in return, there is something to be said about having a culture setter, a winner, an NBA champion, and a high energy, high effort player that can motivate and mentor the young guys in the locker room. Every rebuilding team, or just a team of young players, needs a veteran or two to help the young navigate the waters in the NBA. You can't just throw a bunch of young players together and hope that it works out. More often than not, it goes nowhere. Take a look at the Pistons as an example, or the Bulls after the Jimmy Butler trade. So I do think there is value in keeping Alex Caruso in this lineup, extending him early and having him stay around as the Bulls culture builder and mentor going forward, regardless of the direction they take and still trying to win now or rebuilding. I know a lot of people won't like hearing that, but that's just my take on it. I guess I don't really need to make a separate video on this topic since I said my piece there. Anyway, let me know your guys' thoughts on all of this, on the Bulls looking to find win now players on the trade market. Let me know in the comments. As always, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.